Hello and welcome to our tutorial series about line differential protection. Line current differential protection is a core principle for overhead line or cable protection and is applied from transmission down to distribution voltage levels. Our tutorial series should give you an introduction and deep insights into line differential protection theory and the CPROTEC 5 line protection devices. This session is about line differential protection basics. My name is Philipp Stachel and I'm the product manager for CPROTEC 5 line differential protection devices. The line differential protection principle is very old. It started around 1900 with patents by Schubert. A balanced beam was uh, used for the DC differential protection. Later, around 1900, Schuckert enhanced it further for the AC lines, but still used the local measured currents for the differential protection. Mertz and Price in 1904 marked with their patent the birth of the line differential protection. Some extracts of this patent are shown on this slide here. The currents of both sides of the line are summed up electrical and transferred using a pilot wire to the remote end. In case a differential current is flowing on the pilot wire, it operated the circuit breaker. This principle was then applied in electromechanical relays from about 1910. In these relays, the mechanical torque produced by the differential current operated a trip contact. Around 1960, analog electronic circuits replaced the balanced beam systems and a higher sensitivity was obtained. Unfortunately, in these devices, the long-term stability of the used component was not very good. So from 1997, digital protection relays were introduced and replaced the existing mechanical and the analog electronic relays. They used the existing pilot wires, but later introduced also other types of digital communication. Okay, let's come to the line differential protection principle. The line differential protection principle provi provides the following advantages. It only requires CTs, there is no need for a voltage transformer. It's a unit protection, so 100% of the line is protected without an additional need for a time delay. Therefore, it's suitable for short cables or overhead lines. It's also um, possible to use it for multi-ended lines, so tapped lines and also applications with a transformer in the protected zone or for series compensated lines. There is no impact for parallel line switching states or power swings. All kind of network grounding uh, can be considered. It's very sensitive for high resistive or arcing faults. And finally, the relay settings are quite simple. On the other side, there are also some disadvantages to mention. First of all, uh, you need a communication channel for this protection principle, which needs to be fast, reliable, and it should be possible to supervise this communication channel. The line differential protection is a unit protection. That means also that it does not provide a backup protection for external equipment, like following lines or transformers. Only the equipment in the zone, which is delimited by the location of the current transformers, is protected. The protected zone is shown in below figure here, in the green color. There we have uh, two power grids, A and B, which are connected by a line. The current transformer locations delimit the protected zone and that gives you 100% of selectivity. The measured line currents are evaluated in the connected line differential protection devices, which are here marked with the 87L, which is an ANSI code. And the line differential protection principle is 
based on a comparison of the local phase and the remote phase currents. It applies the uh, uh, first Kirchhoff's law, which is a current law, which says that the sum which flows into a node always equals to zero. The fundamental frequency component is evaluated, which is obtained using Fourier filters. But there are also other uh, methods on the market. The current measurement is um, normally defined towards a protected object, which is shown in the figure uh, with the arrows uh, pointing towards the protected object or into the line. There is no need for an operational time delay, so an instantaneous operation is obtained by this protection principle. But you need a communication link between the uh, relays, uh, which I already mentioned, which needs to be secure and safe. Let's have a look what happens if we have a current flowing at the line. In the first example, we have the normal load condition, which is a load current flowing at the ideal line, shown here. And we look at the phaser diagram on the top right, with the imaginary part and the real part of the phasers which are measured by the protection relays. No? The current IA is measured by the relay in A and the current IB is a current measured in the um, relay B. This is of the opposite direction because the load flows is through the line. The current phaser is therefore in the opposite direction. Most relays in the market will calculate the differential current as the sum of the uh, current phasers from N terminals. For our two-ended application, the differential current is therefore IA plus IB and then the absolute value. This is the ideal condition. In uh, reality, uh, the uh, CTs will have some small errors, which will result in an um, error in the amplitude and the phase, which is um, shown in the figure here with some um, small circles on the top of these phasers. The differential current as the sum of both uh, current phasers will result in a very small differential current. The small differential current needs to be considered in the relay settings. This is particularly the case if you have an external fault situation. The measured currents at the line terminals are the through fault currents. The higher currents result in bigger CT errors and therefore a higher differential current. For this reason, we need a minimum pickup threshold for the differential current setting. In extreme situation, one CT could saturate and the apparent differential becomes very big. For this, we need other types of stabilization, with which I will present later to you. For the internal fault condition, the phaser measured at the terminals A and B appear in the same direction on the complex plane. The sum of both phasers will result in a very big differential current. Here we also consider some CT errors, which are ex expressed by the circles at the top of these phasers. For the internal fault condition, these errors are not so important as the differential current amplitude is very high and the relay will typically operate and trip the circuit breaker. Up to now, we only looked at ideal lines. For a real line, we will have some line impedance, ZL but also line capacitances to ground and between the phase conductors. This is a P model of a line, of a real line. Consider we have a load current situation with the current IA and the voltage UA at the terminal A, which are more or less in phase. That means that the cosinus phi, so the power factor, is close to 1. The capacitive current, IC, is added to the current IA and forms the line current. 
We ignore the voltage drop of the line impedance and can add at the terminal B another portion of the capacitive current IC and get to the uh, current IB in the opposite direction. The sum of both current phases result in a differential current IDIF. This will result in quite a significant differential current, which is the charging current of the line. This needs to be considered for the relay setting. The minimum differential current pickup threshold must be set higher than this expected charging current. Many relays in the market also provide a capacitive charging current compensation. This requires a local measured voltage and will subtract the calculated charging current. The relay becomes more sensitive to low fault currents but also requires a reliable voltage signal. A very common stabilization for the line differential protection is the so-called dual slope characteristic, which is shown on the top right figure here. As explained before, the minimum pickup threshold IDIF grader will consider the uh, and stabilize for the capacitive charging currents. The first slope IM1 will stabilize for small CT errors up to the highest expected load currents of the line. The second slope M2 will stabilize for higher CT errors due to starting non-linearities of the CTs. The restraining current is calculated as the sum of the absolute current value scaled by a vendor-specific scalar value k. For example, k equals one half is a typical value. A differential current seen above the characteristic will um, trip the circuit breaker and below the characteristic the relay will stabilize and um, be stable. The CPROTEC 7ST series, so the CPROTEC 4 and CPROTEC 5 series, use a different restraining current calculation, shown here, which takes into account the CT errors already. The adaptive restrained current calculation considered also the effects of a signal distortion and time differences in a communication channel. I will explain this a bit later. Therefore, the stabilization characteristic looks different and is a single slope of 45 degrees, so m equals 1. We provide a setting for the minimum differential pickup current. This should Set, this should um, set higher than the uh, expected capacitive charging currents. A differential current above the characteristic will trip the circuit breaker, or the relay will trip the circuit breaker, and below the characteristic the relay will stabilize. Instead of comparing current phasers with amplitude and phase, it is also possible to differentiate between an internal or an external fault by analyzing the phase information only. This is done in the phase comparison principle. For completeness, I will give you a few information on this principle, which is applied in the CPROTEC 7SD80 devices for phase currents. Only the polarity of the currents are exchanged between the local and the remote terminal. The lower bandwidth requirements allow also that a power line communication system can be applied for this protection principle. The current amplitude is evaluated only for a release threshold. Therefore, some information is lost and this principle is less sensitive and accurate than a current differential protection. In this example here, we consider an external fault condition. If the measured current is positive, we transmit um, a signal to the remote end, which is yeah, here called mark. Otherwise, no information is sent. Space. 
This is done at both terminals. The local binary sequence of marks and spaces is, com is combined with the received binary information, as shown here. The combined binary signal only contains marks for the external fault. And this does not lead to this does not um, lead to a trip condition. Small gaps due to phase errors must be tolerated and stabilized by some settings. In the uh, legacy technology, uh, information compression was used. The phase comparison is done for each phase current in the 7SD80 device. Legacy relays further compressed the information and evaluated only one combined current signal. This could be, for example, a negative sequence current. For the internal fault condition, the currents at the line terminal A and B are more or less in phase, so both relays see the fault in the forward direction. The combined binary signal with local and remote current polarities result in a sequence of marks and spaces, shown here. This will result in a trip condition. If we plot the operating characteristic of the phase comparison relay with regards to the differential phase angle, we get the following two-sector diagram on the right-hand side. If the phase difference is about 180 degrees, the relay will stabilize. The tolerance angle, um, which is uh, shown here with phi z, uh, can be expressed also by a setting or by a counter. Other region, the other sector, the, the relay will uh, trip the circuit breaker. Not shown in this diagram is the effect of the minimum release current, which would result in a circular area around the origin, uh, with, which, which would be uh, stabilized. An enhanced phase comparison principle, which also considers the current amplitudes, is the so-called alpha plane characteristic. In addition to the evaluation of the phase difference, the ratio of the local and remote current amplitudes is made. Phase currents and or negative sequence and or zero sequence phasers are evaluated. For load or external fault conditions, um, both current magnitudes are similar in their value. The ratio is close to one. This will result in a circle. Some current amplitude difference shall be acceptable. Therefore, we set a maximum ratio R in this D-race. This defines an inner and an outer radius of this stabilization area. The maximum phase angle is defined by the phase error to be considered similar to the previous explained phase comparison principle. Also, the alpha plane needs some additional stabilization for CT saturation, which is not shown here. Thank you.